Alrighty. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for welcoming welcoming me back. Uh, this is actually my third year. I just confused everybody by coloring my hair, so then you don't recognize me. Um, but yeah, so hiding in the uh, in plain daylight, as I would say. So. Thank you so much for having First Mining Gold back. Uh, today I'll be sharing a bit more on you know, what we've been doing over the last couple of years in terms of advancing our exploration successes at our Spring Pool and Dupar Cave project. Traditional forward-looking statements, um, you know, as most of us, we have a lot of exploration results, interpretations based on these. Uh, so if anything changes, please keep that in mind and rather come to us before you make any assumptions. I do want to start off with a land acknowledgement. Our Spring Pool, Duperke, and Cameron projects are located in the traditional lands and territories of the First Nation communities. Um, we have a couple of partnerships in that that we work with. Um, important here as well, and what I'd like to highlight here is our ref reflection tree, which is actually posted at all of our projects and offices. And this is part of our commitment to truth and reconciliation and creating awareness, education, and informing our teams and showing what our commitment is as First Mining Goal to moving forward on this journey of reconciliation. So for those of you that don't know, First Mining Gold is a Canadian owned and operated company located and headquartered in Vancouver. Uh, we have two of the largest undeveloped gold projects within Canada. The Spring Pool project in Ontario has a consolidated you know, 4.9 million ounces of gold, 24 million ounces of silver, so pretty uh, significant. And then the Duparquet project, which is located in Quebec, just on the other side of the border, uh, is a consolidated 6 million ounces of gold in all categories. So at First Mining Gold, um, this is a slide that might look familiar to some of the people, but we truly believe that you know these three fundamental pillars are what makes our exploration program successful. Social licensing, permitting, and timing are critical pieces on which we base all of our exploration programs. It underpins our strategy and our execution. So what I hope to demonstrate today a little bit is like how we've gone and built on these pillars to advance our successes and our, our programs. Another familiar one, and that is because you know strategy is not something that is short-sighted. It is something that you, you need to commit to. It is something that takes time to develop and to make sure that you advance your vision in terms of tangible, achievable results. So um, what we've done over the last couple of years, I've been with the company just over three and a half years, is set the strategy and work diligently to setting up our exploration programs to not just you know, achieve the strategy which is aligned to our business objective, but also setting up exploration programs smart and then keeping our teams to task to make sure that we actually achieve what we set our achieve. So hopefully with what I'm showing you guys today, um, that will demonstrate a little bit of that. And of course, I'll be available afterwards to share more. I am starting to lose my voice because our booth has been very busy, but please feel free to stop by. Um, so yeah, a specific focus for today uh, is just going to be on Spring Pool and Duparque. I'm not going to really talk about Cameron for the interest of time. So for those of you that don't know, know where Spring Pool is, it is roughly 400 kilometers to the northwest of Thunder Bay, um, 110 kilometers northeast of Red Lake, which I've learned in Canadian terms is just around the corner, so it's not too far from here. Um, at Spring Pool, our exploration strategy and our strategy in terms of the project is to really unlock meaningful resource growth within the project's footprint. We have the strong foundation with the 5 million ounces of gold and the 24 million ounces of silver. And what we're trying to demonstrate is like how do we further advance this project and truly turn it into an economically, further economically and feasible project. So. Um, the deposit is characterized as a little bit of a unicorn in terms of the greenstone um, and Archean setting it's hosted in. And essentially, you know, it is a, a Kali trackout intrusion. Um, a lot of what I'll show about today is going to focus a little bit on that and how we're using our geoscience driven understanding of this deposit to essentially vector towards finding more mineralization and further uplifting the resource. So. Um, the deposit, the main resource you can see over there in the brown and blue, if the colors are, yeah, they look good. Um, that is the main resource, 94% of that is already in the indicated category. So pretty confident in what we have over here. 
So in order to turn this strategy um, into an actionable exploration program, we do a lot of data gap analysis. We do a lot of like spinning the model around, turning it upside down and all the angles you can look at it. And essentially, you know, came up um, with this one drill hole from 2013 that was a dual purpose geotechnical and exploration drill hole that was just sitting there in the side wall of this proposed pit. And we're like, well, why is this here? Why hasn't it been followed up? You know, what's going on with it? It's not included in the resource. So essentially what we've done is, you know, bring together the geophysics, as you can see over there on the left image, you know, look at the televiewer data. It's those little red disks in that photo. Um, look at the logs, the structural mappings that we have around the perimeter. Um, and then essentially, you know, started to delineate that this deposit seems to have a little bit of a curl in it. And we're like, okay, well, that would make makes sense for this hole that's sitting over there and has this 101 meters of representative grade of the main resource. So there's opportunity. It's in the pit wall in an area that's currently classified as waste in the economic study. So definitely a lot of upside potential within this resource. So what we did last fall is we drilled it, um, as you know, geos do, as said by the previous speaker. Um, we drilled five holes just under 3,000 meters, and essentially what I'm trying to show on this image over here, if you look on the right corner over there, um, is the continuous mineralization that we had um, in these holes. And again, that is one of the unique things about Spring Pole, is that you have hundreds of meters of continuous mineralization of just under a gram per ton. So fantastic for an open pit deposit. You know, these are the things that essentially make it a lot more feasible. So. Um, our theory was proven up by this results. Um, you know, we had the possibility to see, okay, you know, there's something there. There's definitely validating that there is this curl. We did oriented core, we did structural interpretations of that. And a lot of great results that came out of this. Um, the main driver coming out of that is like, it's one thing to collect data, it's another thing to actually do something with it, not just in terms of the economics, but in terms of the geoscience. So um, for us, our team further refined this uh, stratigraphic section. And the key things to highlight there is that the spring pool intrusive complex, which is highlighted by the pink and the red over there, that's where the main mineralization sits in this deposit. And then we have these two bounding megacrystic trachytes. And if you look at those photos, you can see they're pretty clear um, and distinguish distinguishable. And we could use those as sort of marker beds and then using that with our geological understanding, the interpretation, looking at the structural geology, we worked with some consultants, essentially further delineated this folding that we have within this uh, intrusion. And that's what that little geodoodle, um, you'll see a couple of them today that we have over there. So that's been underpinning our advancements and definitely provides us with an opportunity to further vector towards more mineralization. So we deem this is a successful program, uh, again, sticking to our strategy and finding those opportunities within the near resource and essentially demonstrating that the Spring Pool East target has the potential to further um, add answers to the project. So the next phases of work that we need to do here is to bring all of this data together. We've put in a detailed um, superficial mapping program this year, looking specifically for those megacrystic track guides that we can further map out and delineate, looking at the structure so that we can better model the faults and the frequency because it's kind of folded and folded again, so it's all upside down. Um, and then essentially bringing all of that together in our 3D model and coming up with our phase two drill program. And then that will be further refined with a more drilling, getting that into a resource confidence category over time. Taking a jump, uh, roughly 750 kilometers from here, so it's a little bit further away. Um, we have our Duparquet project in um, Quebec, uh, in the town of Duparquet. We've got roughly 6,000 hectares of land consolidated in the Abitibi along 19 kilometers of the very prolific Desert Porcupine uh, fault zone over there, so a very exciting project for us. We acquired full ownership of this project at the end of 2022, and we've been actively exploring on this project since 2023. Again, over here, um, our objective is to continue to find these resource growth opportunities. The project was very fractured in ownership, the land, uh, so we consolidated a lot of that, did a lot of work in bringing all of this together and then finding these resource growth targets that we can prioritize for drilling. 
So the resource, as I said, consolidated six million ounces, and that's because we have the Duparquet resource, the Pit resource, and the Duquesne resource. But if you look at the main Duparquet resource, which is where the PEA is focused on, that is roughly five million ounces coming in at a gram and a half, uh, with 4.6 million, 3.6 million ounces in the indicated category. It is also, also an intrusion-related deposit with the mineralization sitting on the flanks, essentially, in these uh, structure shear zones. And yeah, a very continuous mineralized system, 4.2 kilometers along strike. And that is pretty um, significant in the Abitibi. Umilarctic has got similar sizes uh, if you look at some of their stuff. So. so again, similar to what we have been doing, sticking to our strategy, consolidating all of our data. This one took a little bit more work because it's newer in our house. So we had to digitize a lot of historical drill holes, a lot of maps, and getting all of that into a usable 3D format. We then uh, had to do a property-wide airborne geophysics program because we also had little bits and pieces of that, bring it all together, did the LIDAR because we also have a lot of swamps um, within the project and like good outcrop, but you want to make sure you can utilize all of those together. And then did this expanded 3D model, which is focused on lithology and structure and some components of alteration across the full property tenure, as you can see over here. So we did that and we developed roughly 100,000 meters of drilling in terms of our target catalog, and then we've moved that forward into a prioritization of the first, of the top 15 to 18,000 meters, and that has been our program this year. We're roughly 16,000 meters into the program. We've got two drills turning and then sort of winding down now, and what I'll be showing today is a little bit of our top um, successes. First one is our miroir target. Um, miroir is French for mirror, and why we said that is we had a target last year, Duparquet 2424 um, in the north zone, returned just under six gram per ton over 33 meters, and geologically this looked very similar, so that's why we have the miroir target. We actually tried to drill at the Valentry target, step down and go deep into that one. I'll talk about that a little bit later and color it into mineralization at surface. So what we've been doing is expanding this superficial footprint. We've got roughly 100 meters of strike along this target, now working our way down it. And as you can see, there's a couple of holes already drilled into it. We don't have all of the assay results back, but a very exciting target for us in close proximity to the Central du Parquet area. So um, something to look out for. Minui. Um, this is our dark horse uh, target, as I'd like to call it, because we were actually drilling the south zone, an extension of the south zone, which is on the southern side of the main Sinai deposit. And we intersected mineralization a lot earlier than we were expecting, and we're like, oh my goodness, what's going on here? The drillers messed this up, you know, we don't know. Um, and essentially, what we figured out uh, when we got the results back, and looking at the structure and the interpretation, that there was this offset structure putting this block 75 meters backwards. And that's what that image there on the right is showing you. So uh, pretty decent grades, 2.5 grams per ton over 12.8 meters, and that 4 over 4 that you basically have representative of what would be an uh, underground grade. Um, so geologically, we were like, okay, well, this is fantastic. You know, how do we build this out? And then we started looking at the cyanide, and we're like, it's never been drilled before. You know, what do we do? And then as our team was working through it, we realized, oh, wait, in 2023, we had a hole, our third ever hole, drilled into something. And we're like, we don't know what this is. And like, we kind of left it alone for a little bit. And then now, when we pulled the core and we match it to Minui, we actually realized this, this structure um, strikes along 315 meters, and it's the same thing. So great opportunity for us within the project footprint. Uh, lots of potential to add more ounces here. Valentre, our last one over here um, that I'll talk about today. This one was essentially on the property boundary. You can see that big gap in the top picture over there. There was a property boundary straight down the middle. The work we've done is, you know, uh, consolidating that, essentially connecting the mineralization, demonstrating that it is continuous. We have one and a half kilometers of strike across this now. We did a lot of work in building that down to a level of 330 meters, continuing to drive that down. And we've been having a lot of success in building continuity in this area. And that would be you know, great for our future resource updates as we're driving this target down. So definitely a lot of value that was generated from bringing all of these data sets together, bringing the geoscience together and then moving the targeting forward. 
So drilling, as I said, is continuing over here. Um, the next steps will get all of these results in, um, share that with the market, and then of course move into what our 2026 program would be. I just want to take a minute here to say that, you know, coming back to those three fundamental pillars I spoke about earlier, things that are important to us and drives a lot of our success at First Mining is that 2024 and 2025, we drilled more than 30,000 meters. We reported no lost time injuries or, inc or incidents on our projects um, on the exploration and operations side. So very proud of those safety statistics. Um, in terms of diversity inclusion at Springbell, 50% of our workforce identifies as indigenous people. And at Duparque, we have a fully bilingual team with you know, being inclusive of the French. In terms of community engagement, we always find opportunities to find employment opportunities within our local communities in the towns of Duparque or our local First Nations communities. And then similarly, uh, try and advance you know, professional and um, preferred partnership partnerships with First Nation communities in terms of businesses, projects, and what we set out to achieve. Um, and then, of course, building on long-term relationships agreements. In July, we did announce that we have the long-term relationships agreement signed with Mishka Gogamin community around Springpool, and our company is continuing advancing those relationships as the project moves forward. So coming up to the end here, uh, I just want to say, you know, um, I believe we are continuing to demonstrate success as we are setting out in our strategy. Everything that we do is aligned to unlocking these projects, moving them forward into the next phases, and truly turning it into something that could generate shareholder value and wealth. So um, together, these efforts with our fundamental pillars are what we continue to build on. And I hope to be back, uh, or one of my colleagues be back next year to continue to share some of these updates. Thank you. <laughs>